Hey, ¿qué tal amigos? Stuart here from Spain Speaks. Today coming to you with another vlog about life in Spain. And I've gone to the internet again and I've found an interesting article written by a man called Mr. Chorizo in a blog called the Chorizo Chronicles. And you can find it at www.expatmadrid.com. Uh, this person has been living in Spain for more than 10 years. And you get the impression that he has a love-hate relationship with Spain, as we all do. And he's written an open letter expressing 32 reasons why he loves Spain. Now, he starts off by saying, Dear Spain, I know our relationship has had its ups and downs. You have your problems. I have mine. Neither of us is perfect. And I admit that sometimes I don't appreciate you like I should. We've grown used to each other. Sometimes I take you for granted. So today I'm writing this letter to tell you how I really feel. It's been a long time since I've told you these things. Have I really lived here for more than 10 years? Okay, so basically he's expressing his love for Spain in this open letter. Now let's go down to the 32 reasons why he loves Spain. Now, 32, it's, whew, it's a lot. Uh, no particular order. Some of the things I love about my beautiful adopted country. Now, we'll have a look at these 32 points. I'll give you uh, my opinions on them as well, considering that I've also lived here for a fair while now. And the first thing that he talks about is the people and diversity of Spain. And he has four points related to this. He talks about the beautiful women, the social life, making friends from a lot of different countries, and people actually get dressed before they leave the house. Now, the first thing he talks about is the beautiful women. Now, I would have to agree with him there because uh, Spanish women are fairly easy on the eye. And no doubt that uh, if you're looking at uh, Spanish men from that point of view as well, they're probably also quite easy on the eye. So that's the first thing he says. The second thing he mentions is the social life and the uh, abundance of bars and restaurants and the laid back attitude. Now, the social life in Spain is very, very good. I've mentioned this in another video that I did that it's not aggressive at all, which is one of the things that I like. You can go to a bar, you can go to a restaurant, you can go to a nightclub and there's no tension. People are fairly laid back. They're friendly, as he says here, and uh, it's a really laid back attitude, laid back uh, way of socializing, let's say, here in Spain. The next thing he talks about is making friends from uh, lots of different countries. That's true as well, because when you come to live in a foreign country, uh, you're a lot more open to uh, meeting uh, foreign people or people in the same situation as you. So obviously that's going to be key as well. And the fourth point he says here is that people actually get dressed before they leave the house. Now, this is one thing that you will notice uh, here in Spain, that people like to let's say, uh, put on their Sunday best before they go out. Uh, they're not inclined. Well, it depends, and it is changing a little bit. Where I live here, uh, about 20 kilometers um, away from the center of Madrid, you can see people uh, roaming the shopping centers in tracksuits and fairly casual dress. But if you go to the center of Madrid, you very rarely see people in tracksuits uh, you know, going about their day to day. A lot of people wouldn't even go and buy, you know, the bread in a tracksuit, uh, let alone uh, go to a shopping center. So that's another point there, which is fairly interesting. The next point here is the languages, Castilian, Catalonian, Basque, and more. Five, linguistic diversity. Six, the expressiveness of Spanish. Seven, the literature. Now, number five, he talks about the linguistic diversity in Spain, and it is true. Spain is a, uh, a country that is very linguistically diverse. Uh, Galician, he mentions, Asturian, Catalonian, Valencian, uh, Aranese in the Aran Valley, and a language in the Canary Islands called uh, Silbo Gomero, which is like a whistling language, and of course, Basque. Number six, he points out the expressiveness of the Spanish. Spanish people are very expressive, and they're also quite loud. When Spanish people speak, they like to speak with their hands. They like to speak with a lot of gestures. Quite easy to sometimes confuse that for aggression if you don't speak the language or you don't understand the language properly because you hear a lot of swear words, words like 
coño, words like, as he says here, me cago en la leche, you hear those words a lot, but according to the context of how they're used, uh, it, they're not overly aggressive, but the expressiveness can sometimes lead to that uh, misinterpretation. And he also talks about the literature, obviously Spain is a country with a very rich um, literature, uh, obviously historically going back all the way to the Don Quixote and also nowadays as well by some of the mo more famous authors nowadays. And he mentions here Dulce Chacon, uh, which uh, is the name of the school my son goes to, and uh, Arturo Pérez Reverte, who is uh, quite a, um, uh, he's one of the, uh, the best sellers here in Spain, similar to like a Ken Follett type of author. Uh, the next one he talks about here is Madrid, one of Europe's top capital cities. Yeah, Madrid is a fairly cool city, as he mentions here. He mentions the city. He mentions that there's always something happening. Uh, he doesn't feel like he's a foreigner anymore. The weather. He mentions the uh, the cold and the uh, the hot weather that we experience here in Madrid, the museums and the parks. Now, uh, I've also lived in the center of Madrid for quite a while, and um, it's a city that is dynamic, but it can wear you down. And he mentions the parks. I mean, if he mentions the Retiro Park. The, the Retiro's bang in the center, and yeah, it's a fantastic space, but it's crowded on the weekends. There's other parks a little bit out of the way that are also good, but it's a very urban type of living. So if that's what you like and you're into that urban type of living, fantastic. And if you work in the center of Madrid, obviously you want to try to live in the center of Madrid as well for the transport reasons. So that's one of the reasons there. Now, the next thing he mentions is that Spanish food and wine are amazing. And he says Spanish food is great. Even some magazine in Australia thinks it's the best country in the world for food. Now, it's good. It's diverse. Uh, the produce is good. Um, I like it. Don't get me wrong. But I don't think it's the best. Spanish people are very... Uh, patriotic when it comes to their food and also Spanish people love to speak in superlatives so everything's the best everything's the biggest everything's the greatest and uh, of course if you talk to any Spanish person they'll tell you that they'll tell you that the jamón is the best in the world and it's good don't get me wrong I like it but is it the best well that's debatable that's everybody's personal opinion there so he talks about uh, Rioja the Spanish wine uh, also uh, Ribera del Duero for example uh, he mentions France Italy Portugal but certainly not as good good a value for your money as in Spain Portugal, perhaps, uh, is quite good value for money, um, in my opinion. He talks about the meat. Yeah, the meat's good quality. He talks about the morfia, which is like uh, black pudding or blood sausage. Chorizo, of course, obviously. Uh, his blog is called Chorizo Chronicles, so he talks about that. And uh, Albariño, which is uh, a white wine from the Galician region. Yeah, it's good. It's um, You know, you can get some good bottles and some bad bottles according to how much you are willing to pay. But in general, um, you're not going to be disappointed with Spanish food. If you're a vegetarian, be careful because it's difficult to get vegetarian food. Um, uh, meals some of the times you can get a salad uh, but uh, meat is the predominant uh, ingredient in a lot of dishes whether it's chicken lamb beef pork uh, meat is the predominant thing uh, bocadillo the calamares well he goes through a lot of food here cocido montañez sherry and uh, olives yeah olives are good of course and finally he says here spain itself is an amazing country like italy but better uh, if you want Roman ruins, you've got them here. There's a bar on every corner. That is true. Uh, has a great lifestyle, even if you're not rich. Yeah, you can live well for uh, a reasonable salary here. Some of the best transport in the world. It's not bad. If you live in Madrid, the public transport's quite good. You've also got a good fast train network here. It's expensive, but it gets you around the country. And he compares it, of course, with the Greyhound system in the US or Amtrak. And according to him, there's no comparison. I can't really talk about that, but I can say that in Australia, uh, transport is not as good as it is here. So many beautiful places to see. Absolutely right. Here in Madrid, you can visit a lot of places uh, that are reasonably close, that are absolutely fantastic. 
fantastic. The beaches, he says he's not a huge fan of the beaches, but Spain has some of the best in the world. Yeah, that's true. Spain's got some good beaches. Obviously, there's a lot of coast. And he talks about Galicia, Asturias, and Cantabria in the north. Um, quite beautiful, the north of Spain. Walking paths all over the country. He loves to walk, so he finds that quite good. It's uh, close to everywhere else in Europe. That is true. You can get to everywhere else in Europe uh, relatively uh, quickly and easily. But before he goes, he leaves one brutal truth. Spain, I've thought about leaving you many times, but no other country I've been to can do what you do for me. No other country comes close to your beauty in friendliness and making me feel all fuzzy inside. Love you, Spain. Thanks for everything you've given me over all these years. Yes, well, quite a good article written here by Daniel. So I would agree with him on a lot of these points here. Obviously, as I said before, according to any particular day of the week, you can write 32, you can write 40. Sometimes you wouldn't even write one because you wake up in a bad mood and everything stinks. But uh, basically, that's it. Be prepared for a love-hate relationship with uh, any city or town that you're going to come and live in here. But in general, as I've mentioned before, the pros outweigh the cons. So that's all I have to talk about today. If you have any questions or comments, leave uh, them in the section below. Check out uh, Daniel's vlog uh, at expatmadrid.com, the uh, Chorizo Chronicles. I'll see you in the next vlog. Hasta luego.